As a disclaimer, what you are about to see in this video, I don't recommend anybody doing. It, there, it's a common trick on the internet with a four core, four thread Q6600 Intel. And it's something that I tried, but I cannot be responsible if you decide to try it on your machine. Okay, so with that out of the way, inside the box here, you might already be familiar with this. This is the old HP pre-built that I got, and uh, it had some cleaning up to do. So we called it AL3. Um, we went ahead and we fixed it. We got it running. We did some benchmarks. We got it uh, pretty decent gaming. I would say um, a most even modern AAA titles like Borderlands 3, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and stuff like that. We were getting uh, 30 frames per second, pretty decent. So can't really complain. And uh, it is something that's something that is playable on older hardware. So uh, it you know it does its job. It still uh, it can still work. Uh, we did end up using a, a 1650 Super a video card in it with four four gig of VRAM. A video card might not be available to you, but anything that can play. Uh, games at 1080p should work out okay if you have an older system. It's an option right now where things are really difficult to get that maybe you can take an older machine and kind of bring it back to life a little bit. So that's what we did with this one, but we did find a little bit of a caveat. When I was doing some research for this, I realized that this CPU only operates on 2.4 gigahertz. It's a slower CPU. It was back in the, the core duo, duo days before i3s and i5s and i7s and i9s and all that stuff. So we wanted to eke out just a little bit extra performance if we could, and I found a way. Um, it's called, well, I don't know what it's called actually. I call it the tape trick because, well, you're putting a small, tiny little piece of tape over one of the pins that keeps the front side bus at 1066 megahertz. And instead, it lets it go to 1333 megahertz, which is a pretty pretty decent increase. We're talking, you know, a, a 30, 33% increase. Well, rough numbers, just a little bit less than 33. But um, it's still an increase nonetheless to performance, which also allows this thing to go from 2.4 gigahertz up to 3 gigahertz. So the operating speed of the CPU is increased and it's still very, very stable. So we ran it against the, the five games that we've been running all along, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Borderlands 3, Dirt 5, Far Cry 5, and CSGO. And just to kind of get an idea of where this sits and what the improvements might've been from before, uh, before they overclock. And what we found was pretty good. And Shadow of the Tomb Raider, about a 7% increase or so. Not bad, things were a little bit smoother. It still did hitch. Uh, on scenes, loading a scene, sometimes it took just a little bit longer because the CPU is maxed out at 100%. It is definitely your bottleneck here. In Borderlands 3, we got about an 8% increase, but it was much, much smoother. Uh, whereas before, you would have some hitches and stuff in Borderlands 3, and those those kind of went away. Uh, the extra speed of the processor really, really helped with this. Those, those hitches and those kind of um, I, I don't even want to call them screen tears because they weren't having really anything to do with the screen. It was just the hitches in the gameplay. Much, much better this time around. Uh, and Dirt 5, we had about a 10% increase. So again, things are looking good here. And all throughout this, we're talking about 1080p being playable. You know, you're getting in that 30 frames per second range. Now it's not the magic 60 frames per percent or the 60 frames per second, but we are talking about 12 year old hardware. With CSGO and uh, Far Cry 5, again, a measurable increase and something very, very good, uh, a step up in, in both directions. We went ahead and I measured these uh, just in the 1080p. And when we go back and we compare these numbers, that the original setup was pretty close to the, the newer HP that has the, the Ryzen 5600G, more on that in a moment. The Ryzen 5600G and the other one, we compare it to this one, and those numbers, the original setup for this, were pretty close to the same. Well, with the new update here, or with the overclock trick now, you can see a significant difference in all five games. All five games jump, and you might look at these charts and go, but Paul, uh, it, you're still getting more frames per second in the lower resolutions with the, the newer system than you are the overclocked old system. Well, yes, but keep in mind, you can play 30 frames per second or better 
in 1080p on the old system now, whereas it's just not possible with the other HP. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Now, what we are going to do soon is we're going to, the reason why I mentioned the, the newer HP is the 5600G, that Ryzen 5 5600G, according to AMD, that is now going to be released August 2nd. That, the 5600G and the 5700G both will come out to market. So these will be available. So I definitely want to see what they do in another system where they can stretch their legs a little bit and they're not kneecapped by what HP has done in their new system. So stay tuned for that. Always, you know, it, as always folks, that's, I just wanted to kind of share this with you. I was really, really surprised at the results. First of all, I was surprised that it worked. Second of all, I was surprised at the consistency and how stable it was. And then third, I was really surprised that things just were a definite increase. Now, it might seven to ten percent might not be a great increase, but when you're talking about a little bit older games, and you know something like CS:GO improving like it did almost thirty percent, or some of these other ones that I'm going to test, that I expect probably the same results there, they were already pretty decent on on older hardware. I'm going to find out how much more they improve with the overclock. Um, we're talking that's you know that's not half bad. So. Uh, that's all I got for this one. I just want to kind of update you guys and let you know what's going on with the overclock. Uh, all you have to do if you have one of these and you're more curious about it, I'm, this is not a tutorial. I'm just here for the pie, ma'am. So if you're curious about how to do that, um, just Google Q6600 overclock tape and you should be able to find it on your own. Like I said, I'm not going to do a tutorial on this. I'm not going to be responsible if somebody goes and does that, but in my case, it was very stable, it worked very well, and I'm very happy with it. So, uh, once again, that's all I got. Don't forget to visit me on the other social medias, like if you liked it, dislike if you didn't, but kind of give me an idea what I did wrong. And until next time, folks, uh, I'll see you later.